So we're now going to talk about at atomic and molecular spectra and how these are explained um, using the concept of quantization. Okay? So uh, let's first talk about the facts about light, some facts about light. Light, you can separate into different colors. So for example, if you have a flashlight here running through a prism, you're familiar with this. It, it separates into the colors of the rainbow. And remember the wave model of the light uh, allows us to explain this. Um, we say each color is associated with a different wavelength, so waves with different wavelengths are bent at different angles. Okay, and of course you have light that you can't see. Invisible light would be in the uh, infrared and radio waves. That's past the red or beyond the violet end of your spectrum. You have the ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays. Okay. Now. If you were to get light from a source that has a high concentration of atoms, like a filament from an incandescent bulb, okay, and you run it through a prism, you get what's called a continuous spectrum. You get a continuous band of color. So something like this would be an example of a continuous spectrum. Okay, continuous as opposed to what you might get when the light source has a very low concentration of atoms. Okay, so for example, if you have a hot gas, so you remember in the gas, the atoms are relatively uh, significantly far away from each other on average. The, the spectrum you get, okay, from a sample that has a low concentration of atoms will look something like this. You're not going to get a continuous band of colors. You're gonna, actually going to get mostly dark areas with very bright lines in between. Okay, so this is this what you have here is what you would call the line spectrum or a discrete spectrum that's that's observed for a, for this particular sample. Now, each atom and molecule, it turns out, has a unique spectrum. It's sort of like its fingerprint. So, for example, this spectrum right here that I'm showing you, we have red, uh, that looks like green, bluish green. And then you've got violet right here. This characteristic spectrum that you see here is unique for hydrogen. Okay, so if you see this spectrum, you know it comes from a hydrogen atom or it comes from hydrogen atoms. Okay, so you can use the light that's produced by atoms and molecules as a way of identifying them. And that's how you can tell what's out there in outer space without having gone there. Okay, you base it on the light that you see. So uh, an example, uh, a very nice website that you can go to to see all these uh, emission spectra from atoms would be uh, this site right here. What was that site I read, right? Jersey.uoregon.edu. Oregon, so just do a search for, just do a search for Jersey U Oregon, University of Oregon.edu. Okay, and there's the lab from the, uh, what was it? Elements. Elements spectrum. And you should be able to find your first link to be this Java applet right here. So I'll have the applet to run. And if you click, you can see. If you click on emission, okay, that's the light that's produced by the atoms. This is the characteristic for hydrogen right here. Okay, so this one, this red line occurs at around 656.8 nanometers. That's, so that's around 656 nanometers. This is given in angstrom, so that's 6,564. And angstrom is a tenth of a nanometer. So that's... 656 nanometers. This thing right here that's bluish is around 487 nanometers. Okay, so if you drag your mouse, it brings up a cursor that has a that tells you what the wavelength of the lines are. Now, if you're dealing with neon, that's the neon lights that you see in those uh, signs, outdoor signs. Okay, these are the different colors. It's the characteristic. Uh, pattern of light that's produced by neon. Okay, so uh, this is carbon, sodium. Okay, uh, the brightest of these lines that you typically see is this yellow line right here, is around 589 uh, nanometers. That's yellow light. Sodium lamps, 
have a characteristic yellow color and that's due to this wavelength right here okay and uh, so you've done your flame test in your freshman lab test for different ions so if you do a flame test for sodium you get a yellow light this is that, that's that's the wavelength of that that's the same yellow color that you see when you spill your soup on your gas stove. Okay. Uh, so you have salt, sodium chloride in your salt soup. Okay. Or if you electrocute a pickle, that yellow light you get, that's the same sodium. Okay. So, yeah. There we are. Do a Google search for a pickle electrocuted and you'll see that it produces a yellow light. That's due to sodium. All right. So anyway, that's a characteristic spectrum. Okay, so the, the thing is, why do atoms and molecules have line spe discrete spectrum? Why do you have these lines? Okay, why can't they just produce all sorts of different wavelengths? So how do you explain that? Okay, um, before we actually go to the explanation, we, let's talk about absorption spectrum. The same thing, ab absorption spectrum refers to the light that an atom or a molecule can absorb. So if you have a light source, let's say you have a continuous light source right here. Imagine this light source, in, so we saw this one earlier. Imagine if you did not have this gas, what would you have seen here? A continuous band of colors. But if you pass it through, if you pass it through a, a, a gas sample, okay, some of those colors get are blocked out, right? So you get, you get these dark lines. So those are what you would call the absorption lines, uh, which is characteristic, again, of the atom or the molecule. Okay, and it doesn't absorb everything. So it will absorb, preferentially absorb some wavelengths over others. All right. So, and like I said, each atom or molecule has a unique spectrum. So this is the absorption spectrum down here for hydrogen. Okay. And this is the absorption spectrum for sodium. So if you go back to that website, you can see the absorption spectrum. Okay, so instead you get a continuous band of colors, but in between those colors you see very dark lines. Where, where uh, those are line, those are wavelengths that have been absorbed by the atoms in the sample that you pass the light through. Okay, so hydrogen. That's the absorption spectrum for hydrogen. Again, that 656 nanometer line is there. Okay.